Good morning, Chairman Issa, Ranking Member Cummings, and other distinguished members of the committee. My name is Eric Nordstrom, and I currently serve as a special supervisory special agent with the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Diplomatic Security. I joined the Department in April 1998 and have served in domestic and overseas postings, including Washington, D.C., Tegucigalpa, Honduras, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, New Delhi, India, and most recently as the Regional Security Officer at the U.S. Embassy in Tripoli, Libya, a position I held from September 21, 2011 until July 26, 2012. As the Regional Security Officer, or RSO, at the U.S. Embassy in Tripoli, I served as the principal advisor to Ambassadors Kretz and Stevens on security and law enforcement matters. I am here today to provide testimony in support of your inquiry into the tragic events of September 11, 2012, including the murders of Ambassador Stevens, Sean Smith, Glenn Doherty, and Tyrone Woods. I had the pleasure of working with Ambassador Stevens during the final months of my tour in Libya and would echo what many are saying. The loss of Ambassador Stevens is not only tragic for his family and sad for our country, but his, dust, but his death will prove to be a devastating loss for Libya, struggling to recover from its recent civil war. My family and I would like to offer personal condolences to the families of these four patriots who gave their lives in the service of their country. My contribution to our nation's efforts in Libya will prove to be only a small part of a wider effort. There were many of us dedicated to the mission in Libya, both at home and abroad. To my colleagues who served with me and to those who are presently there in the aftermath of this attack, you have your country's sincere thanks and prayers. Let me say a word about the evening of September 11th. I had not seen an attack of such ferocity and intensity previously in Libya, nor in my time with the Diplomatic Security Service. I'm concerned that this attack signals a new security reality, just as the 1983 Beirut Marine Barracks bombings did for the Marines, the 1998 East Africa Embassy bombings did for the State Department, and 9-11 did for our entire country. However, we must remember that it is critical that we balance our risk mitigation efforts with the needs of our diplomats to do their jobs. The answer cannot be to operate from a bunker. Arriving in Tripoli in the midst of the Libyan Civil War, it was immediately obvious to me that the post-revolution Libya was a weakened state, exhausted from their civil war and operating under fragmented and paralyzed government institutions. They were barely able to protect themselves from armed gangs, Qaddafi loyalists, or roving militias. As a result, the Libyan temporary government was unable to extend security assets to diplomatic missions in customary ways that, we've become expect that we expect around the world. We could not rely on the Libyan government for security, intelligence, and law enforcement help to identify emerging threats or to ask them for assistance in mitigating those threats. In Benghazi, however, the government of Libya, through the 17th February Martyrs Brigade, was able to provide us consistent armed security since the very earliest days of the revolution. Routine civil unrest, militia on militia violence, general lawlessness, and surprisingly motor vehicle accidents were the primary threats facing our mission and personnel during my time in Libya. As Colonel Wood noted, uh, in the spring of 2012, we noted an increasing number of attacks and incidents which appeared to target foreign affiliated organizations. In response to these incidents, we implemented a number of changes to our security posture des designed to mitigate those threats and disrupt any planning by would-be attackers. Those efforts included reviewing and practicing our emergency preparedness drills, and most importantly, we reiterated our request at all levels of government for a consistent armed host nation security force to support the mission. We also requested st security staffing and extensions of the DOD security support team. In my opinion, the primary security staffing issue that we dealt with was maintaining U.S. security personnel, whether diplomatic security agents or security support team members, 
for a sufficient amount of time to enable the full training and deployment of a local bodyguard unit. In early July 2012, prior to my departure, Post requested continued TDY staffing of 15 U.S. security professionals, either DS field office agents, mobile security deployment agents, or DOD SST personnel, plus retention of a six-agent mobile security deployment training team that would work with our newly created bodyguard unit. Earlier post extension requests for our DOD SS team in November 2011 and March 2012 were approved. Also in March 2012, I requested DS staffing levels in Tripoli of full five, five full-time agents to be permanently assigned there, 12 temporary duty DS agents, and six mobile security deployment DS agents, again, to train our newly created bodyguard unit. A request to maintain a level of five TDY DS agents in Benghazi was included in that same March 2012 request. Our long-term security plan in Libya was to deploy an armed, locally hired Libyan bodyguard unit. Due to Libyan political sensitivities, armed private security companies were not allowed to operate in Libya. That was the case under Gaddafi, and that was the case under the Free Libya. Our existing uniformed static local guard force, both in Tripoli and Benghazi, were unarmed, similar to our local guard forces at many other posts around the world. Their job is simple. It is to observe, report, and alert armed host nation security or armed response forces, possibly DS agents, if that's the case. The use of local nationals as armed bodyguards is a routine practice in the department and we often do so to comply with the local firearms regulations of the host nation. Local nationals provide us with continuity, local expertise, threat awareness in their community, and language and cultural skills. I'm confident that the committee will conclude that officers and employees of the Department of State, Diplomatic Security Service, and Mission Libya conducted themselves professionally and with careful attention to managing the people and budgets in a way that reflected the gravity of the task. I'm proud of the work that our team accomplished in Libya under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. The protection of our nation's diplomats, our embassies and consulates, and the work produced there is deserving of the time and treasure invested. I'm glad to further discuss my experiences and hope it provides beneficial to the committee the State Department, and my fellow DS agents who are protecting and advancing U.S. interests abroad. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee for the opportunity to appear before you today. May God bless our country as we work towards peace in a contentious world. I stand ready to answer any questions that you might have of me. Thank you. Ms. Lamb.